Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Uh, welcome. So tonight, uh, we got a couple of questions that uh, that popped up in our pregame chat, and the first one is about the question is. Why is it that no matter how much I, how hard I tell myself and how often I tell myself to, to uh, use less force, I oftentimes find myself doing so. And uh, the, we come to this awareness like, oh, I'm tensing up my shoulders while I'm driving the car. And Scott was saying like, well, he's sharpening a knife and like, you know, and getting, using a lot of, of effort in that. And, uh, and so the question is, why? And what can we do about this? And uh, in the simplest way of thinking about it is that that's, that's how we're wired. <laughs> we, uh, and, and unless we consciously make uh, an effort to do something other than that, that's what's going to happen. We are going to use way too much muscular force uh, to uh, to get the job done. Yes. Does it have a lot to do with feeling before doing, like that chef with the with the uh, knife through the bone space between the bones? Yes. Yes, it does. So uh, so we're still set. We're still setting up the. Uh, we we don't want to go to the punchline just yet. No. So. <laughs> The, uh, so the, and we have a pro we're programmed to, to do it that way. And that's, that's the, the, uh, heritage that we've, and we've gotten from our, uh, our ancestors. And that is that we are programmed to respond in a pre-conscious way. So a lot of this you know, this tensing up happens because of it. Most of the actions we undertake during the day, and, you know, some people have said as much as, you know, some psychologists have said like as much as 90% is happening at a, a, an unconscious level. I prefer pre-conscious because it's, they're varying stages of, of unconsciousness. And, and so unconscious is kind of a fuzzy word, but uh, pre-conscious just means I haven't thought about it yet. I haven't, I haven't realized it. So whenever, you know, Scott says, oh, I'm, I just realized that I'm using a lot more effort whenever I'm sharpening this knife than I need to, that's going from pre-conscious to conscious. And that's the game we want to play here. We're bringing the, the pre-conscious into consciousness. And when we do that, cool stuff happens. That's when we awaken parts of the brain that have been asleep, you know, and a lot of it has to do with a psychophysical action that is movement or, or physical effort that is being done at a, at that pre-conscious level. We're doing it half asleep. And, you know, how many, how many times have you gotten in the car, driven to some place that's pretty familiar and you realize you get there and you don't remember having driven? It's like, you know, you're just like, oh, here we are. Huh, how do we get here? And, and it's because so much of that's happening just at that pre-conscious level. And um, so one of the things that happens that causes it us to tense up is that we, when we initiate from the motor neural network, Okay, so just to review that, and this actually applies to a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about, is that that there are two types of uh, the the sensory motor network of, of of neurons. Two entirely sensory and the motor are two entirely different types of neurons and entirely different set of uh, of, of pathways. So, whenever information is going from the central nervous system. The brain, the spinal cord, etc. They, they, to instruct the muscles to contract, that is the sensory. No. 
I mean, that's the, that's the, thank you. That's the, uh, the, the motor. motor, motor network, whenever, or the efferent, whenever the, um, we're receiving information from the senses, from the extremities and going to, returning to the central uh, nervous system, that is the afferent or sensory neural network. Most of the time, this is happening at a pre-conscious level. I mean, like most of the time, particularly the afferent, particularly the sensory. And so we are occluded to much of what is going on in our world. And whenever we go to activate at that pre-conscious level, there is, it, it kicks in the sympathetic nervous system, which is the go, go, go part, which also tied into the fight, flight, freeze response and stuff like that. So all this stuff is, is happening as, as if there were a, a, a small emergency happening. Whether you're aware of the emergency or not, there the body is is responding as though there's something dangerous here, and I better be on my guard. And when the whenever we bring that into conscious awareness, then we have an opportunity to cool that down. The thing is that most of us are in that sensory over overloaded in the uh, sympathetic nervous system most of the time. So there is this, what we call stress. And that stress causes us to get hypervigilant and reactive. And that causes the, that pre-conscious motor response to kick in. And cause we're, we're getting ready for action. So the uh, one thing that I've been talking about recently in these in these, these sessions is that at the core of Taiji exploration is conscious feeling and conscious movement. And so what I said at the beginning that oh this is this is what the, what we're doing. This is what we're doing here, bringing the pre-conscious into the conscious, into consciousness. So they get in the classics, they talk about like, oh yeah, this is, we all are smelling and seeing and, and hearing and things like that. But to do it consciously is a difficult task and it takes a lot of practice. The, the good news on that is that anytime you do that anytime you you stop and smell the roses. It is money in the bank. It brings you into the present moment, and you your brain reacts by going into a heightened state of coherence. And so, in these cases, I look at it as a um, as a plus that, oh, I realized that, I just realized that I had been in, in a pre-conscious state regarding this activity, and now I'm not. I'm in a conscious state. And so every time I had that awareness, instead of kicking myself and saying, oh, you idiot, you did it again. It's like, no, no, hey, go me. I got, uh, I woke up again. And again, and again, and again, and again. And you just keep waking up, keep waking up until it becomes much more of your life is spent in that waking state. Much more of your time is spent. Oh yeah, you're, you're tuning in to what's going on now. So uh, why don't we go uh, unmute everybody just to, Anybody have any thoughts, questions? Valerie. Okay. Um, probably about three months ago, and this was maybe a month before Ethan gave his talk on Sunday, 
and we were talking about being in those conscious moments. Um, I was realizing that when I was uh, pouring the water from the tea kettle into the teapot, that I was always shifted over into one leg and I was tense and my shoulder was very tense doing the pouring. So um, I started being aware every morning. I, I'd always go first, first thing, I'd pick it up and I'd realize I was over on my right leg, everything was shifted over there, everything was tense. And it's taken me about three months to get to where now I'm 50-50 with my weight rather than being immediately into my right foot. I still have to be conscious of relaxing the muscles in the shoulder while I pour the water. So, um, and I become aware of that. I become aware of, oh, my weight's 50-50. I didn't automatically go into that, you know, 100% on one side. So I'm assuming that even though I'm realizing it, I'm, I'm still going through that woke up phase of, okay, I may not be just on one side. I may be even with my weight now. I become aware of it. Um, is that right? I mean, is that saying, okay, yes, you, you hit an awoke, awoke moment, an awakened moment. Uh, you know, still have a ways to go. Cherish every awakened moment. Cherish every one of them. Just like, oh, yay me, you know, celebrate it. And it's like, huh, I was asleep, now I'm awake, yay. And uh, so every one of those is an opportunity to, you know, to celebrate, to, to enjoy. And because each one of those is, it's, it's springtime. It's, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's Christmas. <laughs> Rick. I guess I, yeah. Bill, go ahead. Go ahead, Valerie. So I, I, I don't want to say I'm afraid, but I don't want to get to that moment of uh, where I've trained myself to be, you know, 50 50 with my weight and relax my shoulder and didn't just take that for granted, right? I mean, I want to be aware every morning when I'm pouring my tea that I got it. Okay, I've trained myself away from it, but I don't want to take that for granted that I've trained myself away from that. Good. Right? That, that's the celebration. Yeah, that's a celebration. I, I have a, a thought on this. I'll get back to you in a moment there, Rick. I just wanted to, uh, no this is actually apropos of, of this because it, it, it leads into a broader discussion also, and that is awakening from the trance. And how do we awaken from a trance? It, um, you know, we can be startled into awakeness, but most of us are spending a large part of our day, you know, like the, like the psychologist said, you know, 90% of the day just in that kind of sleep state where we're just kind of doing without really consciously doing anything. So um, if you recognize a trance, and by a trance, I mean a pre-conscious behavior or state where you are locked into a pre-programmed uh, behavior um, and, what, and when you realize that, oh, that's a trance, or if it's pointed out to you, that's a trance. This is something, oh, I always do this, huh, and I, got, I keep doing it. The, way I, uh, I trained uh, to myself and, and also students to in, in, in my Tai Chi classes is particularly in push hands is by actually putting people in trances very, you know, very quickly put them into a trance so that they could recognize that, oh, the brain had just shut down. They went to sleep. And so it was anytime that happened is there, Coherence was out the window, and they're easily uprooted. And and if something is, it was sometimes all it takes is just you know squeezing someone's arm, just just boop, just a, a quick squeeze. Like the brain goes, what was that? You know, squirrel. And it uh, 
uh, you're in a trance. And uh, so one way of, of waking up from a trance that you recognize that, oh, I do this all the time, is by consciously doing the thing that you've been doing unconsciously. So like saying you're in your stance, you know, consciously go into the thing, the behavior that you want to change. Actually go there and and make a friend, make friends with it. Say, oh, cool. I'm just gonna hang out here and in one leg and just do that for a while and do it consciously. Instead of resisting it, you just you ask it to join the party. And then you say, oh, okay, let's try something different, shall we? And you go off and you do do whatever else you want to do. But first you do the thing that you are trying to change. You consciously do the thing you're trying to change. And that will that will allow you to wake up enough to be able to untangle some of the pre-consciousness around that. That makes sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, Rick. Now, uh, speaking of sleeping and awake, I'm pretty relaxed and feeling good when I go to sleep. And I use the uh, breathing thing and uh, the other suggestion that David uh, gave in terms. But I invariably wake up with my neck and shoulders stiff. So it's not, I'm not conscious, I'm unconscious, I'm sleeping. So is there anything I can do beyond the breathing exercise, breathing all the way down to the wing ding or whatever it was uh, that might help me not uh, be so tight when I wake up in the morning? So uh, if I understand you, the, it's a, there's an actual muscular tension in your neck and shoulders. Yeah, it's stiff. It's very, very stiff in the morning for some reason. Okay. Uh, obviously, the, the, the first thing to look at is, you know, you know, have you eaten your pillow in the middle of the night or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> you want to see, you want to check that out and see if there's, uh, <laughs> you know, are you sleeping when you, when you do wake up, are, are you in some weird position? Because that will do it. So if you're, if you're, so it may be that there is, um, happening at the pre-conscious level, a tension that is causing you to, that is voicing itself in the middle of the night. Whenever you are, the all the consciousness that you're bringing to it during the day to say, okay, and it's like, no, no, we got a problem here and we're, we're doing it. So it, uh, so that is, um, That's kind of along the same lines where that is, oh, okay, I want to go to that place and mimic that, mimic that behavior. Let's say it's just, it's 10 shoulders, right? Oh, okay, I'll do that. I'll just hang out in 10 shoulders for a while. Like say, okay, okay, what do you, what do you got to tell me 10 shoulders? Is there something here that uh, I should know about this? And then you, you play around with that and then eventually you know, you say, okay, now let's try something different. And it's very similar to the, the trance idea there. That is you're, you're, you're taking a behavior which has been on automatic and you're shutting down the autopilot and you're, you're flying on manual. And when you fly on manual, you can see, oh, this is what I'm doing here. This is what my strategy for, uh, for doing this particular uh, behavior. And so that's that's one way of doing it. Other things, you know, it just it may be a, an indicator also of a uh, a higher level of stress during the day than you are acknowledging. And that's that's another another possibility there too. That is that, oh yeah, I'm a whole lot more wired up than than I'm willing to concede to myself. And so just kind of get into the get into communication about that, you know, so really looking at, at the, um, you know, your re responses, your, your emotional and psychological responses during the day and say, oh, okay, so that is, that is bothering me a lot more than I thought. So, 
That, that, Excellent. That's my on that. Yeah. So just be just be conscious. Be conscious of things. Don't shut things down. Cool. Right. Just, yeah. And and go to the place. Go to the place that's that you're doing unconsciously, and uh, and and inhabit that. You know. Set up a tent. Stay the night. You know. Get uh, camp there. You know. Just get that. Uh, uh, like that. Does that make Very sense good. to you, Richard? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, was, I was referring to Richard Thomas, I've seen oh, as a, uh, as a, as a psychologist, I, uh, I wanted to, uh, that makes sense, oh. what I've just said? He just, he, just, he had halibut, he had halibut. Memories of halibut still swimming yeah. in his um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little un, uncertain as to, as to kind of where we're at. Um, we're processing a particular activity or a particular act, a particular action, and we're determining whether or not we're sort of prepared for it or partly pre prepared for it. So that not, we, exactly, not exactly. So it's observing a behavior that's happening, like what Rick was saying, like there's something happening in, in the sleep, waking up, tense shoulders and neck. Okay, why why is this happening to me? And so I was, I was saying that it's kind of like a trance there, only it's happening very deep in the unconscious. And there's one of the, the, the possibilities is that it's the body trying to solve a puzzle by getting tense in, 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 while you're sleeping. And so you take it over consciously and do it and then something may be revealed okay, okay. and then depending upon what kind of feedback you, <laughs> so depending upon what kind of feedback you give yourself you can change things for the next night or the nights to come right right i mean you can also find if there is something else there's a if there's a message that's being being communicated at that at that pre-conscious level Say, oh, I should, uh, you know, check the uh, check the stove before I go to sleep and make sure that uh, you know I turned it off or whatever it is that, that that's bugging you. Cool. Okay, uh, moving forward, shall we? Um, anybody else have it? But okay, great. Let's moving forward. So the uh, uh, I think that that handled that particular question regarding behaviors that that we become aware that we are using a lot more a lot more force so there is a a reason why in in the classics they talk about uh, this so often it's like you know do not use excess force it's because that is that is how we're programmed we are learn we're, what we're doing is not natural I hear, I read a lot of things that say, oh, Taiji is so natural. And, and I don't, I, I'm not buying it. Taiji is not natural at all. Taiji is supernatural. It is, it is something that you're learning how to do that is kind of going against nature, going against, you know, what you've been programmed to, to be and do. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with, with that, with saying, oh yeah, we haven't been here before. It's not like, oh yeah, if I were just like I was when I was uh, two years old, then I would be, I would be, I would be fine. No, when I was two years old, I was a mess, and <laughs> you know, it. Uh, I, I don't want to be there, you know. <laughs> now I want to be where I exactly where I am, and uh, so the nature, as is expressed in your body mind, is. Um, it's kind of crude. And there's this synthesis of consciousness and, and physicality that allows us to attain to a super consciousness that is, I think is kind of cool. And it, uh, it's, it can be a whole lot of fun. And it also allows us to uh, manifest abilities that are not present, just depending on our 
our natural skills. So um, moving forward from that, the other question, I'm trying to remember it now, is, um, oh, elbow gin. Dennis was asking about elbow gin. We, uh, we covered that a couple of months ago and, and Dennis was asking for a review on that and I would be very happy to do that because it's, um, it's not something that people talk about a lot. And even though I have, it, um, I think it's a, it's, it's a real key part of the, um, the equation. I've written several blogs on, on the subject. So if you, uh, you wanna get an in-depth study of the, you know, some of the references from the classics, um, uh, please do. But I'm gonna give you my synopsis and without, without a lot of that. And that is that the kinking the hose prevents the energy from circulating properly throughout the body. So if we, if the hose is kinked and, and there are several places where it, it's particularly uh, uh, pronounced, particularly the qua and the jade pillow gate and the uh, shoulders are another place that where we tend to clamp down and kink the hose. So when that happens, energy gets, gets uh, very um, restricted. Energy flow gets very restricted. If we change that, if we unkink the hose, particularly in the shoulders, you'll, you'll notice an immediate effect that is demonstrable, but is also experiential. So it magnifies your effective power dramatically, instantly. And it, uh, but it also changes your internal state. So in the, in the classics, they talk about elbow gin, or, and they don't talk about elbow gin, they talk about it as one of the eight gates, eight primary gates of Taiji is, is uh, Zhou. And, uh, but usually they talk about it as a, an elbow strike. That's the, uh, that's the expression, but there is, there are places where they actually say, no, no, if you get the elbow, everything else is better. And it's like, this was a link to something that I've been exploring for a number of years. And that is, it's something that I noticed in playing push hands and, uh, and teaching is that people who have their uh, arms collapsed or elbows dropped, uh, there is a break there and the chi doesn't get, get all the way out, doesn't get through the arms. So, but whenever you do consciously reach with the elbows as if you're, you're gonna push away from something, you just actually take your hand and and push in on your on your elbow, and then with your elbow just push against that, just like you're you're reaching out with your elbow through your hand, and that's the action there. That so you're actually opening the shoulder joint. So by doing this, you are unkinking the shoulders, and it dramatically changes your your chi. So, um, and it's something that is, when you're doing a Tai Chi form, it's, it's in every movement. Every, every posture has this in it. It's just that it's very rarely uh, mentioned. And it's also the advice I, I, I encounter most often is you sink the elbows or you drop the elbows. And uh, as a way of reduce, relaxing the shoulders. And um, I haven't found it to work that way, not as described that way. I haven't found that. Whereas I find it, it if you activate the, if you 
consciously reach with the elbow, just like if you consciously reach with the, with the index finger and you feel the elbow, then you dramatically increase your power. Maybe, uh, you give me a hand with this? Oh dear. Oh dear, yes, I know. <laughs> so, just, just by way of demonstration, if, if, if Maria just drops her elbows and relaxes that, and I push in, and she resists. Come on, you no. <laughs> really, that it, it it it's very difficult to to generate any kind of mojo that way. Whereas if Maria just reaches out a, a little bit with the elbow, and she <laughs> immediate change, and we drop the elbow and gone, and she reaches with the elbow and it's. It's huge the 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 effect. So, but if you if we have a, if I push in on her arms like this, she, it's easily very easy to collapse because this is not a particularly strong muscular connection. But she just reaches out a little bit with the elbows, and I push in, and, and there's no way I can move her. And that is, it's it's a dramatic effect. And so whenever she makes a, a movement like 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 that, right? Boom. So if, they, if that arm is coming around and she is coming from the shoulder, go ahead. So nothing's going to happen. Whereas if she reaches with the elbow and then and then and then comes around like that, then it is a whole different animal. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Rick? Yes. Yeah, so for me, the sort of light bulb went on when I realized that the basic technique isn't punch, but elbow, right? So that, so that it's not, uh, so that that is, that is the focus, right? It, when people, I mean, there are movements, there's the, like downward parry punch, all that stuff. But when you look at the, at the eight basic techniques, the eight gates, there is no fist involved. It's the it's the elbow and the shoulder, and that was kind of what lit the light for me. I think you're yeah you're right. I hadn't, hadn't really thought about that. That's that's a, that's an interesting insight. So the the fist is and the fist is what what it's it's a tai chi fist is a very soft fist. Yeah. So the energy is what propels that. And so. Uh, Going back to something we were talking about a few weeks ago, that is mobilize first, then move. Mm -hmm. So, and to mobilize is to get your stuff together, just like a, if a, for an army mobilizes by getting its, getting its stuff together so they can then go out and do army stuff. Same thing with the body. If it, if you try to move before you mobilize, before you mobilize the chi, then you're going to have a muscular activity. You're going to have an action that is strictly a mechanical action. Whereas if you mobilize first, then move, magic. So, um, with the elbows, uh, the, the key is feeling the elbows. You're reaching and feeling, just like you reach and feel the index fingers, you reach and feel the elbows. So just while you're sitting there, just get yourself settled and then just reach with the elbows, reach with the index fingers. And just notice the change in your internal state instantly. So the um, uh, 
it's it's a topic which is hasn't really been explored all that much, and uh, uh, it's it's brand new. It it it's it's been around forever, but it's also uh, also kind of brand new. You uh, any motion if you initiate it with your shoulder, then you've already kinked the hose. Whereas if you feel the elbow, reach with the elbow, rather than pushing the elbow out, just get the, the distinction between pushing your elbow out and reaching. And th that, that'll give you an idea. The, uh, um, just like when Maria was trying to, to push me with the, uh, using from the shoulder, nothing's going to happen because it's, it's strictly a muscular activity. So we want to get it so that we're training, mobilize first, then move. You mobilize the chi. So let's take, uh, why don't you stand up? Step out. You feel the balls of your feet. Set the knees. Relax your lower back. Allow your sacrum to drop. Reach up with the crown of the head. Tuck in the chin. Song Kwa, just release the Kwa and reach out with your elbows, reach with your fingers. <clears throat> Using your hands as a barometer, just notice how quickly you feel chi flow in the hands. And with that also, the blood follows the chi. Bow forward. As you straighten up, your hands come. Set your elbows. Reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers. So there's opening. You're opening your shoulder joints. You're opening the elbow joints, your wrists, your fingers. Rotate your forearms from the elbows. Just be aware of the elbows and rotate. Notice the chi that you're generating just by turning your, rotating your forearms. Reach with the thumb and reach with the little finger. So we're mobilizing the chi. Set the elbows, reach down the elbows, the wrists follow. Reach with your right elbow, 
turn and bring your hand up your center line. Feel your left elbow reach down with your hand, your left hand press down as you push up with the right. Just feel reach with your left elbow spiral down to the left and turn. Right hand comes down, left hand comes up the center line. Pause a moment and just feel into that. Feel into the energy potentiality of this posture. Your hand, right hand is reaching down, left hand is reaching up. So we have these poles in opposition, which generates chi flow, but we're opening the shoulder joints, unkinking the hose allows that to flow, to, to flow and to circulate. Continue. Feel your elbows as you, as you do this. Feel into your hands. reach with the elbow. So you're, that turn, you're initiating it this time by reaching with the elbow. Left hand comes down, right hand comes up. Rotate. Palm up, but you're rotating from the forearm. You're rotating the form, but you're rotating using the elbows at pivot point. Feel how quickly your whole body is, is filling up with energy and circulating. Spiral down to the left. down to the right. This time, turn. And reach up, reach down. But feel your elbows. Reach with the crown of your head. So learning to mobilize first, then move demands that we bring conscious awareness into our, into our activities. Circle the left hand, turn. Reaching, opening, feeling your elbows, feeling, feeling the shoulders opening. Come back to center. Open wide. And feel the field being generated between your, between your hands. Your hands are expressing the unified chi of your whole body. The John Tijin. That's that whole body energetic connection. Hands come down. And spiral down to the left, step forward with the right foot and then bring your 
right elbow out, open. So you're initiating, the arm follows that elbow. Pivot, sink down into your right leg, step, left elbow, left forearm, left wrist. Bow down to the left, step back, right elbow. Bow down to the right, step back, left elbow. Arms up, feel that shape. Step forward with your right foot, pivot. Step forward with your left foot. Back. You just feel into the posture. This is conscious movement, conscious feeling. Notice how present you are. The more we occupy the state of conscious feeling, conscious movement, the more awake we become, the easier it is to go here at any time. Step in, take a deep breath, and disappear the chi. Empty out. Feel the floor with your feet. Feel the yang chi cascading down through your body and out through the balls of your feet, out through the bubbling well. Feel the yin chi rising, supporting, nurturing, calming. Great. Okay. Grab a seat, please. How'd that feel? <laughs> Great. Good. Fantastic. Wonderful.
So, Lynn. So, I'm really, it feels incredibly wonderful. And I'm really finding that when I go up with my elbows, um, I immediately feel the chi like pulsing. Like I, I'm having a real hard time holding my hands actually still because everything just wants to go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, which she's is, a dynamo <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so it's great i don't know if there's anything i should do other than just go with that <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to start <laughs> that's right yeah, Rick. <laughs> i when when we're emptying out the chi i cannot i can't seem to keep myself when we come to the end of the breath to activate the four fingers and the elbows. Should I not do that? Should I not activate the four fingers and elbows at the end of the emptying chi movement? Uh, because again, like I said, the rave starts again. As soon as I activate <laughs> the four fingers and the elbows, the energy comes back in and goes, did you miss me? Yeah, no, I understand. It, uh, it's your choice. <laughs> you get, well, I will you take your advice. advice. Oh, do, do, do I want to go into a calmer state or do I want to be more electric? And Is it, uh, is it hurtful <laughs> to let it come back in or should I just keep say, guys, the, the club is closed. I, I, I think it depends on how well you want to sleep tonight. Oh, <laughs> that answers the question. There you go. Thank you. Being able to, to, to throw it away then allows you to fall into the rhythm of your body. All right, so yeah. I don't activate my four fingers and elbows at the end. I just let it. I would say at this time of day, that yeah, probably yeah. Uh, probably a good idea to just kind of you know calm it. But um, for me, I just know that if I if I reach out with those elbows, like you say, the you know. <laughs> One more time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes. and, Johnny, uh, I'm home. Yeah. I'm home, Johnny. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Yeah, there we go. That's the one I want. Valerie. What I notice um, is that when I activate the uh, elbows, whether I'm moving or particularly when I'm standing in a posture, that it makes me more aware of uh, Jade Pillowgate, Ni Wan, and my tailbone. So I'm able to be more in central equilibrium than before because I'm not sure what it is, but the elbows, they take away the stress from in the, the shoulders. So then the, the Jade Pillowgate can be, uh, uh, probably not a correct term, but be activated and when that happens, when I've got knee one, jade pillow gate, and tailbone really dropped, I'm already in the balls of my feet. But the elbows allow that to happen more easily and whoa, 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 right. a whole different state of brain. It makes everything better. Yes. It makes everything better. It just, uh, it just, Cranks, cranks it up to a different level whenever you do that. And um, when you don't, it's obvious, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other stuff that, that, you know, should work doesn't work nearly as well. You know? uh, yes. You have higher expectation. You know what I'm talking about, Stan. You know, you're, I sure you're, do. Other, other stuff, you know, you're doing it all by the book and you say, yeah, it should work. You should be better, and but you had that one little bit there. It's like, oh, oh, oh that's nice. <laughs> that 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 feels good. Yeah, it's good. Cool, Andrew. Um, for years that you know when when we do the the shed the chi exercise the <clears throat> the final, I often find that coming down, right about here, I get stuck. Like there's a little problem and it feels very much involved. I mean, the shoulders manifested, but it feels very involved with the something like if I let the elbows lead, 
It's a problem. I have that problem spot right there as you pass the shoulders with the elbows. It's got a, a hitch right here. Yeah. And, and do you notice it as, as an energy hitch or a physical one? Um, more physical, but probably energy as a result. Because there is a transition point. Right. There's a place. Yeah, at that clearly. There's a, there's a place here where, you know, you can catch on the shoulders. But if you open up, you're reaching with the elbows as you're coming down. Ah. It opens up. Part of it, I think, is structural, particularly for those of us who have spent way too much time hunched over a computer where you know the mm. shoulders kind of go forward like that. It closes down the space in your in your shoulder joint. So that there is some chafage happening there on the tendons whenever you whenever you do that. So there's a click you you run into that. But if you open, so by reaching out with the with the elbows, you have you're more open at the shoulders, and I find less of a less of an inhibition there. But I, I know what you're talking about. If my hands. If I, my hands are coming down here like this, you know, there is a, there's a little bit of a grab there. And I think it has to do with the, the shoulder joint closing down. So you want to open that shoulder joint and bring the, bring the hands down. And I think it, I think it works better from a structural standpoint. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Laura. Um, I have the same issue with that because I get a lot of clicking in my shoulders and, and that really helped a lot with reaching. And I've been finding also just thinking about expanding and opening the rib cage right here. Yes. And then the um, shoulder blades a little bit together, but more the opening and that that's been helping a little, helps a little for me. Great, good. Yeah, that, that, you're right. That, 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 that does help. But that clicking is the, the elbows really helps with the clicking. Beautiful. Yeah, the clicking is just where it's rubbing against a, uh, a tendon. And, um, and that's just because you, 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 there's less space in there. So you want to you really open that up and, ah, and, and you know, a conscious intention to do that uh, does create more space there in, in, the, uh, in the shoulder joint. Yeah, Scott. Um, it seems like you have your hands further out than some of us, so maybe that's an issue too. Is that right? Yeah, when I was watching you and Andrew, you had your hands right, further right. out than him. You mean on the clearing? Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm like this, right? Boom, like that. Is that? Uh, mm. So it's, it's, it's out, about, out about that far. You know, maybe eight, ten inch, eight, ten inches uh, from the body. Is that uh, is that what you're looking at? It looked mm. a little bit. It looked a little bit further out from my view. Okay, I do it facing you, so it could be could be the camera. Is that does that look like? Uh, yeah, maybe mm. it's just the camera view. Might be the camera right. angle. I like right. it uh, about, about that far, but use use your own. Your own body. What what feels comfortable to you? Yeah, I'm just thinking if you have your hands too close to your body, you're definitely gonna kink your shoulders. Absolutely, absolutely. you're absolutely right. If you you're doing this, then you're you're definitely jamming into things. They so. can find the sweet spot of where they are most open in that. Yeah, Maria says find the find the sweet spot. You know where's that? Where where does that feel? And actually, just do it right now. Just reach out with your elbows. You just just Bring your hands and find where where is that where is your sweet spot, and just uh, you know, it energetically there will you'll will get some some positive feedback, you know, from from your energy whenever you do it, whenever you find that right spot. Did you, did you find that true, true Scott? Did you find it true? Me and Valerie both found it further out was, was the sweet spot. Good, good. So yes, so do that. Do, mm -hmm. do the, 
find a sweet spot. Thank you for bringing that up. I hadn't really, really uh, considered that. Thank you, Maria, for that, uh, for that putting in those terms. That's great. Yes. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Thank you all so much. Love you. Thank you. Got, uh, home class tomorrow night. Thank you. Thanks, thanks.